Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white festival ramp deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Built around Storm the Festival, the six-mana sorcery from Midnight Hunt lets us look at the top five cards of our library and then we can put up to two permanent cards with mana value five or less from among them onto the battlefield and the rest goes on the bottom in a random order. So Storm the Festival is hoping to find some expensive permanent but of course we can also hit lands with it so it keeps on ramping which also helps with flashing back Storm the Festival from our graveyard, which costs 10 mana to do it all over again. And of course a great combo with Storm the Festival is Ren and Seven. The plus one ability reveals the top four cards of our library, and then we put all lands revealed this way into our hand, and the rest goes into our graveyard. So if we reveal Storm the Festival it will end up in our graveyard, and then Ren will also help us put more lands in play to eventually flash it back. Then the zero ability lets us put any number of land cards from our hand onto the battlefield tapped, which is actually an ability we'll sometimes use, because our deck has such a high land count, the plus one from Ren is very likely to find lots of lands, and then the zero ability can help us enable landfall on our various permanents. Then a minus three makes a tree folk token with power and toughness equal to the number of lands we control. It also has reach, so lines up nicely against the various dragons in the format. And then the minus eight ultimate lets us return all permanent cards from our graveyard to our hand, and we get an emblem saying we don't have a maximum hand size. And then Ren and Seven pairs very nicely with Isika's Chariot, as most people know by now. The 4-mana four 4-4 four four legendary vehicle is joined by a pair of 2-2 cat tokens when it enters the battlefield. Crew cost is 4, and when the Chariot attacks we create a token that's a copy of target token we control. So copying the Tree Folk token from Ren and Seven is one of the goals of the deck. And then at 4 mana we also have the full place at the Felidar Retreat as another great payoff for ramping and putting extra lands in play. And so with Landfall, whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, we can either make a 2-2 white cat beast creature token, or we can put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control, and those creatures also gain vigilance until end of turn. So it pairs very nicely with the various tokens from Asika's Chariot, as well as with Scute Swarm, the 3 mana 1-1 one, one insect, with a landfall generating a 1-1 one, one insect token, unless we control 6 or more lands, in which case we can make a token that's a copy of Scute Swarm, which can get out of hand very quickly, and then we'll eventually swarm the opponent, especially when paired with the plus 1 counters from Retreat. So these are the win conditions that we're hoping to ramp into, so we're going to need some early ramp, which is where Neverwinter Dryad comes in handy, a 1-1 one, one that we can pay 2 mana to sacrifice and search our library for a basic forest card and put it onto the battlefield tapped, so we can play it on turn 1, sacrifice it on turn 2, and hopefully play a 4-drop on turn 3. Then we also have two copies of Lotus Cobra, 2-1 with landfall generating 1 mana of any color, and then a full playset of Murasa Root Grazer, a 2-3 beast with vigilance that can tap to put a basic land card from our hand onto the battlefield, and with 28 lands in the deck we're pretty likely to have some spare lands in hand that we can ramp out with our Root Grazer, especially with Ren and Seven finding more lands with the plus one. And then once we do run out of lands in hand, we can still tap the Root Grazer to return a basic land we control to its owner's hand, so we can replay that land and re-enable some of our landfall cards. And then Vigilance also means we can potentially sneak in an attack before using the abilities. And then we also have two copies of Field Trip. Now this is not a permanent, so it's not a great combo with Storm the Festival, but it is still a solid ramp card, allowing us to search up a basic forest to put on the battlefield tapped, and then we can also learn for one of our seven sideboard lessons in Best of One, including two copies of Environmental Sciences for more lands, Reduced to Memory as Removal, Containment Breach to deal with artifacts and enchantments, Introduction to Prophecy as Card Draw, and two copies of Mascot Exhibition as an extra win condition. And then we also have two copies of Portable Hole as some cheap removal to give us a bit of early interaction against the various aggressive decks. And then the mana base has four copies of Evolving Wilds as a nice way to enable landfall twice in the late game, four copies of the Green-White Pathway, which we do technically want to play as early as possible so we can hold basic lands in hand to combo with our Root Grazer, Two copies of Lair of the Hydra as a nice creature land in a ramp deck where we can make it quite large, but we do still need lots of basics, especially forests, to find with our Dryads and our Field Trip, as well as to combo with our Root Grazer which specifically needs basic lands, so we've got 10 forests and 8 planes. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, this hand is pretty land light and no early ramp cards, so I'm gonna have to mulligan. 
this is better. So Dryad turn to activate, turn three chariot, and then probably bottom one of the festivals. Evolving Wilds being a tap land could also hurt us, but luckily found another land here. So turn one Dryad, turn two will play the pathway on white and keep the basic land in hand for Root Grazer. Put on blue green, so it could also be a ramp deck. Make that soul tie with Innkeeper. Alright, now that we drew the planes, I probably want to keep Pathway as an option on green. So we have the triple green for festival. So I guess we'll just play the planes maybe. And then I can still decide what to do with the Dryad. And I'll probably save one damage over trying to deal one damage. Can jump Innkeeper and still sag Dryad. Yeah, I guess we'll probably still have the triple green here as our opponent plays their own chariot. Opponent was on the play, so they get to attack with it first, but they did use Innkeeper, whereas we're going to use Dryad, so we'll have an extra mana going forward. Oh, I guess... Uh, I thought we were already in the end step, so it took one damage that I shouldn't have. Scoot Swarm's nice, can easily help us take over the late game against Chariot, but still gonna play Chariot now. And then next turn, can play Scoot Swarm plus maybe Evolving Wilds, we'll see. So the opponent won't be able to play Ren and Seven here, because they used Innkeeper for ramp, whereas we could technically still top deck it and copy our tree folk. It's gonna be a Florahedron. So our opponent probably playing Elrond's Epiphany as well here. And they might go for the trade on chariots because they're afraid of a Ren and Seven from uh, our side, or they might have another chariot in hand. So then the question becomes, do we accept a trade? And if so, what do we trade? Because I could trade for the cat tokens or the chariot. Close call. We have Scoot Swarm to eventually go wide, which blanks most of the opponent's cat tokens. Keeping my own chariot in case I top deck round 7, of course, would be nice. So... It's hard to say. Could also just take four. Although that doesn't really solve the problem here. So I think I might just trade for my chariot in case I draw another chariot as well. Keep my tokens in case I draw Felidar Retreat so I can pump them up. And play it safe here. Alright, immediately punished as we draw Ren and Seven. That's alright. Um, I guess I want to minus first, although then we're maybe in danger of losing it. If they attack with everyone, it would be pretty bad if they have removal for my tree folk. But I want to wait to play Scoot Swarm until I can make a token right away. Could also just play and plus to make sure I have the land for Storm the Festival next turn, which is also not a bad idea. So let's try that. Alright, so next turn we can Storm the Festival. And Scoot Swarm will be able to make lots of copies. Binding to destroy Ren is unfortunate. But also would have been able to destroy the Tree Folk and then they would have been able to attack our Planeswalker just the same. Opponent foretells what is presumably Alrun's Epiphany. So against an opposing Epiphany, I am tempted to make the trades here since we're just going to be taking more damage next turn. Even though Festival into Felder Retreat is a reason not to. 
Uh, backup chariot's nice, but we'll save that for next turn alongside Scute Swarm. And then for now we'll storm and hope for the best. Alright, not bad. Ren and Portable Hole. Or I can go for Forest. Portable Hole can exile. Let's see, if I get rid of the Florahedron, they might not be able to cast Epiphany. So maybe that's the plan. And then we'll make a tree folk. Which can also block all of the storm giants. Gotta watch out for Death Touch next turn. So yeah, hope they don't draw on untapped lands, so we don't have to deal with Epiphany. They're also missing double green at the moment, so they won't be able to cast a run if they drew it. Alright, nice. So, let's see here. I've got a lot of options. I could even use Ren and Seven's zero ability to make lots of Scute Swarm copies here. And then probably want to play the untapped lands, so I can also play Chariots. So do we zero, make lots of skewed swarms. Of course our opponent could still have some sweepers like uh, the Meat Hook Massacre, but our opponent's just gonna concede here with, I'm sure, Epiphany as the foretold card, but we can have a look to confirm. Oh, I guess not. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and this hand is missing green, unfortunately, so let's take a mulligan, this is better. So turn one can play dry, it's turn two sacrifice it, field trip for Ram, so maybe Cobra is the weak link here. As if I play Cobra on two, I'm not sacking the Dryad, and it's just more vulnerable to removal in general. Sure. Alright, so... Probably still sacking the Dryads, so get in one point. Up against presumably mono green. So it's all about getting to our heavy hitters as soon as possible, and we're off to a pretty quick start. And next turn I can already storm the festival. And then what do I learn? Could just get mascot exhibition. That way I have a powerful play lined up the turn after I storm the festival. That seems reasonable. So we're on the play, off to a quick start. Opponent can disrupt or ramp with any fight spells. So for storm the festival is good, I like my chances. But of course it's not a guarantee. I'll keep the basics in hand. And yeah, we definitely bricked here. A root grazer and a land, not what we wanted to see. Could also just go for double land and help me ramp towards the flashback half, as a root grazer doesn't block particularly well. And uh, yeah, it could just get killed by a fight spell. Although then again, if they fight a root grazer, they're not fighting my mascot exhibition token, which can potentially block. So maybe still go for root grazer, plus doesn't matter too much, we'll go for planes. Since I didn't want to get Evolving Wilds to shuffle those lands back into my deck. So we're gonna take a beating and uh, opponent's gonna get to draw a card. So not loving my chances anymore. Storm the festival giveth and storm the festival taketh. Yeah, so pretty nice curve from our opponents, all things considered. I do get to keep my root grazer. But a mascot exhibition looks kind of tiny in comparison to the 
creatures on the opponent's side of the battlefield. So four, five, six, seven, eight. Next turn I can try and flash back storm the festival at least. But I'm not sure if this is enough to keep me alive in the meantime. We'll see. Something like a skewed swarm could help us stabilize against mono green if we can make a few copies. Or a very large Renan 7 token. So do they also have a fight spell is a question. Doesn't look like it, but they might have a pump spell here like Snakeskin Veil. So we'll have to keep that in mind. The Root Grazer has done its job, so don't really care if it ends up dying here. But I would like to take out Pack Leader and Chariot if possible. So let's go to blocks. So what are some good blocks here? The 4-4 four -four on Pack Leader is fine even through Snakeskin Veil. So that seems like a reasonable block. I could put Root Grazer on Cat and the 2-1 and 3-2 on Chariot, but then Veil on Chariot is pretty bad for me. But there's no easy way to swap those around. I could put 3-2 on Pack Leader and then 4-4 four -four and 2-3 on Chariot. But opponent's probably just happy to trade for the 4-4 four -four and save the Pack Leader at that point. So I could triple block Chariot, take 7. But it's also kind of risky because then our opponent's just going wide and kills us that way. So I don't think we can realistically beat a Snakeskin Veil is what I'm getting at. So I think we just have to hope they don't have it. So I think we'll try this. And yep, yeah, there's a Veil. Saves a Chariot as expected, so... It's going to be tough to beat. Alright, we need a very good Storm the Festival here. And that's not it. Land and Root Grazer, or Dryad and Root Grazer, is uh, not going to keep me alive, I don't think. But probably need the blockers. So I got four blockers. If our opponent can play a creature and attack with Faceless Haven, we're probably done for. Blizzard Brawl will do too. So I'm guessing they just drew it, since otherwise we probably would have seen it last turn. Their opponent can send everyone. I guess I'm technically not dead on board, but I'll be at one having triple trumped. So I don't think we have any outs. So yeah, we had a promising start, but uh Needed some luck with our Storm the Festival, which the mono green deck is just a little bit more consistent with its powerful threats. Doesn't need to rely on luck with uh, Storm the Festival. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. If our Cobra survives and we draw another land, we're in business. So, I guess I'll play this on 
green, then pathway on white, and then keep basic in hand for as long as possible. Alright, do we get to play chariots perhaps? Would be nice, and then we're just a land away from a Renan 7. Up against another mono green deck, there's our land. So, I mean, on the play, this is as good as it gets. Especially for Cobra survives. Not gonna for the trade. Other opponent could technically have the same start of turn 3 Chariot. But when we're the ones copying the Tree Folk token, we're gonna be ahead. It's gonna be an old growth troll, but no green for a fight spell, so. Yeah, we get to live the dream here. Play Ren. And then I'm fine with the trade here. And our opponent concedes, so that was a quick one. All right, we're on the draw. Hand is nothing special. Definitely need to draw land for it to be functional, but gotta hope with 28 lands in the deck total on the draw, we should be able to find one by turn three. A dried without turn one green is a little awkward, but can eventually still get our forest facing blue-black control. So probably a matchup for Felidar Retreat is going to be decent if we can resolve it. As that's pretty difficult for blue-black to get rid of once it's in play. But getting there is going to be the problem. And still no land, so I'm getting a little bit nervous. Want to wait to play Dryad until we can also sacrifice it immediately so the opponent can't remove it. Disruption on Cobra is actually fine. So yeah, just want an untapped land, and we're fine. The rest can have a look. Could go for field trip, maybe goes for the planeswalker, we'll see. Right, took the field trip to try and deny our mana. So if we can draw a land right now, we should be okay. Opponent's Esper. Sadly, no lands. I think I still play dry it out, but there's an argument for holding it until I can sack it right away in case of removal. And yep, there's the Infernal Grasp. Alright, there's lands. Do I play Scute Swarm? I think I do. I'm okay if that gets removed. Opponent's gonna have some sweepers in their deck, so it's not like Scoot Swarm's the end-all be-all win condition. Vanishing Verse, so pretty happy with that exchange, since Vanishing Verse would have been a great answer to retreat. So our opponent answered our early threats, was able to slow down our ramp game plan. But if they don't close out the game quickly, the threats are going to start coming. Alright, let's play retreats. Could try and play around Jory Disruption, but retreat, especially with landfall, is kind of rough to try and play around a conditional counter spell. So it looks like that's going to resolve. They could, of course, have another Vanishing Verse to exile it afterwards. And then we're just a land away from Ren, which helps us get to six mana for Storm the Festival as well. Another Duress. I imagine takes our Planeswalker. Nope, takes a Retreat, which is the only castable spell. And then a Memory Deluge, not what we wanted to see. Opponent's going to find more answers while we're struggling to deploy our hands, so 
They've got a chance to play the rest once again before we have the mana to cast our spells. And then we're just top decking. Cobra, not great here. So yeah, our draws weren't amazing. The one play we could have made different is not play the Dried out until land 3. But if we didn't draw the land, then Dried would have been a way to get to land 3 in the first place. So yeah, not loving this early start of the game. Opponent could potentially flash back Deluge if they have a land and dig even deeper. Eventually find some Planeswalkers of their own. More counter spells. Luckily Storm the Festival has flashback, but getting to 10 mana is going to be difficult. Right, opponent bounces Lotus Cobra. Keeps card on top. Alright, let's play Chariots and probably get that countered. Alright, resolves. Color me surprised. So now we've got a threat that can potentially survive a sweeper. Calling gonna kill all my tokens, sadly. Fair enough. Celestus. Alright. Opponent can transform it to nighttime right away. Just to loot. But looks like they were happy with our card. Well, I can resolve Ren and Seven, make a token, copy it with Chariot, that seems fine. So all of a sudden we've got a pretty dominant board state. Let's see how long that lasts. Hopefully our opponent's not playing mastery to destroy all permanents, but a meat hook massacre for five is still pretty good. Alright, so kills all my tokens. But now we can storm the festival and uh, try and find some more action. And then uh, probably just plussing with Ren. So we'll do that first in case I hit another Ren off storm the festival. Then I should keep my basics in hand. Alright, a backup chariot just for the tokens. It's probably fine. And then I'm thinking Evolving Wilds for the landfall triggers. And then I'll go full control here. Keep the chariot that can attack. So we'll make the cats. We'll choose plus one counters. And then I can crew the chariots before getting the counters so the chariot also gets Additional counters here. And then I could even fetch and make another token if I wanted to. That seems reasonable too. So the token will resolve first and then everything gets counters. Sweet. And then we can attack. Alright. Pass it back. And our opponent needs another sweeper here. But uh, calling's not going to be enough. Just a land, so they seem pretty dead. Flashback Deluge, opponent's completely tapped out. And yeah, can just turn my creature sideways and that's going to be game. Sweet, so despite a rough start, we managed to draw our way out of it onto the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Dryad, turn to sacrifice it, maybe turn three chariots. Facing 
what looks like mono green. Turn two sculptors, so they could have their own turn three chariot here. Storm the festival looking good. If Sculptor attacks, we get to chump and sacrifice, so no Chariot is good news. Might see a Troll instead. Kazando Mammoth, alright. So now the question is, do I keep ramping? And then next turn I can just play Storm the Festival. I think that's better than playing Chariot. Also allows me to chump with a Dried on Mammoth to soak up some damage. So let's do that. Still uses my mana quite efficiently. A Ranger class, that's fine. Alright, so opponent didn't have the most amazing start, although now the pack leader adds a bit of pressure. Just gotta hope this uh, festival's gonna be good. But we're still at 18 at least. Alright, let's hope for the best. Alright, not bad. Chariot Retreat or Double Retreat. Although I wouldn't be able to get a Landfall trigger unless I go Retreat Land, which doesn't seem worth it. So probably... Hmm, it's actually kind of interesting. I think I need the board presence of Chariot, so probably Chariot Retreat. And then next turn... I can field trip as well to get an extra landfall trigger. Try and keep my creatures alive as much as possible. Ooh, that's uh, unfortunate, a natural growth. Yeah, now, uh, now we're in trouble. Opponent didn't have the most amazing start, but a natural growth more than makes up for it. As their opponent's gonna crash in there for a million damage. So I can chump Mammoth and take... 14, I guess. And then I can still try and do something with Chariot to just keep chumping forever. But next turn they could give Pack Leader Trample. Well, I guess Field Trip could get Mastery to exile the growth, so that's potentially a way out, or even just a Disenchant. So we do have an answer here. But I'm gonna take a lot of damage in the meantime is the problem. Next turn I can get a couple landfall triggers, grow my tokens up to like a 4-4 maybe. I don't think I'll be able to necessarily crew chariots. So I think I'm okay trading, especially given that we have a backup in hand. Although I guess it's still a chump here instead of a trade. Because I can't not block mammoth. Alright, so that works. Skewed Swarm. Skewed Swarm to the rescue, perhaps? If I go Skewed Swarm, land Field Trip, I have a bunch of Skewed Swarms to chump with, although the Pack Leader's Trample is still a concern. So I think I still have to Field Trip for our Disenchant here, and then I'll have to cast it. I'll make a beast. And then... Do I choose counters or... Do I choose an extra token? We're at four. They can still trample the pack leader is a problem. So... Yeah, we're still not out of the woods. There's ranger class providing a counter. Mammoth could grow up to a 5-5. Five five. Yeah, it might still be plus one counters. And that also allows me to attack. And 
then I think I have to breach over playing anything else here. And then I have to survive this next turn, and then we can try and stabilize with Scoot Swarm and Chariot. But, like, a fight spell would be bad. A run on seven I might be able to handle. Makes a token. And no land, that's huge. So the Mammoth doesn't grow. They can still get a counter from Ranger class. Opponent does not attack. Alright. Evolving Wilds, another great draw. Alright, sequencing. So I can Chariot, Swarm, and then Evolving Wilds. So that's probably how we'll do it. And then I don't have to crack the Evolving Wilds right away. For now, make a beast. And then I can hold the Evolving Wilds at instant speed to either give me counters or an extra blocker, but most likely going to be counters. And then next turn storm the festival can be flashed back. So we're still in the game. I thought we were dead to growth, but having that sideboard lesson, of course, is huge. Ranger class. I will have to fetch with Evolving Wilds by the end of the turn if we want to flashback Storm the Festival. Ponot levels up Ranger class. And sends in the big creatures, but they're completely tapped out, so we don't have to fear any combo tricks. And, uh, yeah, we should be able to line up some decent blocks. Second so Crew Chariots. And then Fetch. Get Counters. And then go to Blockers. This blocks pack leader, can double block 6-6, six, six, and I guess double block mammoth. Seems fine. Keep all our scute swarms alive. So we'll play a land, probably still making a token, or I could go for counters once again. I guess counters is fine, in which case, let's crew chariot first. And to run on seven chariot, another scute swarm, portable hole also an option. So, can I kill my opponents? Opponents got three blockers. Nine, twelve. Yeah, I think if I just get more landfall triggers here, we'll be okay. So, forests into maybe portable hole, get rid of a token, and then just smash with the team. And that's game, so pretty crazy comeback, thanks to Field Trip finding an answer for natural growth, and then Scoot Swarm followed our retreat, helping us take over the late game. So yeah, we face Mono Green quite a few times, and I think in theory it's a favorable matchup, or deck goes slightly bigger, so as long as we can get that nice early ramp start into payoff, or deck will eventually win the late game if we can survive. 
but uh, that also requires us not to miss with Storm and Festival, which can always happen. Then when it comes to some other popular matchups like the Is It Epiphany deck, I don't think we are necessarily favored there, since the opponent can usually combo off and take all the extra turns they want before we manage to kill them, since our deck isn't incredibly aggressive. So unless we've got the dream start of Chariot into Ren and Seven, we're probably gonna eventually fall behind. Then when it comes to Mono White, that's a little bit different than Mono Green, since Mono White usually goes a little bit faster than Mono Green, so they could easily go underneath us before we manage to, you know, ramp into something big. But on the other hand, they don't have giant trampling creatures to worry about. So it's probably gonna be somewhat similar to Mono Green. That's also a matchup where having access to the portable hole is quite important, so the more early interaction the better. But of course we still need to focus on ramping into our payoffs, so it's not like we can dedicate too many slots to early interaction. But even a Morasa Root Grazer does a reasonable job of blocking early as a 2-3. So it's probably not as good a matchup as Mono Green, but probably still winnable unlike I think the Epiphany matchup. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.